Okay, welcome back. The last lesson from behavior-based robotics. Um, we, uh, in chapter two, we look to the history of robotics. Now we're starting to look into the future. And as you can imagine, looking into the future is quite uh, difficult. Um, for sure, uh, with it in the, the middle term, on the short term, or the really, really long term, it's quite easy. So we will uh, look at it. What uh, the other title could be of this uh, chapter is, is Fringe Robotics. It's all the strange sort of uh, things the roboticists have tried uh, to recreate uh, robots uh, with this bio-inspired uh, uh, examples. So we'll first head in, into uh, those uh, examples. Each of them is accompanied uh, by a video, but uh, you can find uh, each of those videos uh, below. Um, so uh, one of the uh, nice things that uh, are done with in Japan, in Savida, is uh, that they try to recreate the, the human voice by making a an, an human uh, mouse. And you uh, can see that you can really make sounds and emotions by having a, a real what's it, a mouse with the soft components, etc. So that's it's something really nicely bio-inspired and also a very what it, a freaky if you look at, at, at the video. Um, one of the companies that uh, is really uh, a very uh, bio-inspired is, is Festo. Um, every year they ask uh, some of their engineers to build an uh, robot uh, based on nature. So they built elephants, they built uh, kangaroos, they built a birch. And it, it, it's great to see what it, uh, uh, how good they could uh, replicate uh, nature. Uh, the nice thing, and we see it also later on uh, by uh, the, the, the elephant robot, is that uh, by using a nature uh, you could also uh, apply that uh, to uh, the, the uh, shop floor automation, as, as Festo uh, does, with, with the ideas that you get from this sort of uh, bio-inspired robots. Because uh, an, uh, the snout of an elephant can uh, pick with it, uh, the very different shaped uh, objects, and you can reuse that again at the factory shop floor. One of the most, say, bio-inspired, uh, impressive uh, robots of the last time is from Boston Dynamics. Boston Dynamics is anyway with it uh, great in uh, uh, creating uh, robots. They made uh, a robot to uh, that replicates uh, a, a human. Uh, they uh, uh, made robots that uh, look like a moo, but they call it a dog. But one of the most uh, impressive one is the cheetah, that is uh, the uh, robot that really actually could uh, uh, run with 60 miles an hour. And that's really, really freaky, freaky fast. And one a nice uh, example of one of the, the, the French uh, robots, what's uh, already made. Um, another example of uh, a nicely with it, uh, fringe robot is, is the companion robot made by Manier Floza. And uh, what, what her strategy is, uh, we think that in principle a robot should be able to do it all by himself. But um, sometimes a robot should be with it, uh, daring to ask. So the nice thing uh, here is that uh, she uh, uh, has a robot with quite limited uh, capabilities, but everything that he can do, uh, he can ask uh, the humans for help. And in that sense, uh, we are really social uh, beings, and uh, we're uh, glad to help uh, the, this robot uh, find his way, uh, get into elevator, etc., etc. Uh, and in space, with it, they worked uh, uh, quite uh, hard to uh, get uh, robots uh, that help uh, the, the humans. Why? Because it, it's really, really uh, expensive to get uh, humans into space. Uh, the last 20 years, 
uh, mostly not more than three uh, humans have been in space at the same time. So at the moment that you can uh, double that with uh, robots, that's uh, great. Uh, so uh, the NASA has uh, some f nice uh, examples of it, but also the, the German uh, space agency uh, DLR uh, has very nice examples. Uh, and it's uh, robots that are really uh, able to do very nice uh, stereo vision and catch uh, objects that are thrown uh, to them. What was really handy if something is drifting in, uh, in free space. Another uh, freaky uh, example is, is the cyborg beetle. That's not uh, really a, a robot, but that's uh, a real beetle uh, that uh, has a, a chip on its uh, back and that's connected with I its nerves and you can uh, control uh, the beetle by sending uh, signals to that uh, control uh, uh, backpack and uh, let it fly around uh, with it in the direction you want uh, by uh, control it via uh, Wi-Fi. So that's uh, the really the sort of uh, uh, freaky way of uh, uh, how to control the uh, uh, robots. Uh, another thing what, it, uh, what uh, is great from uh, uh, Boston Dynamic is uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the sand fleet. It's a quite small uh, robot, but I it has an, uh, uh, an, an, uh, a tail where it, uh, with it, it can wrap it up as, as a crossbow and with all that force that it can build up, it, it can uh, jump 25 its it, it size. And uh, that's, uh, it, it's quite normal for uh, small animals as a sand flea, but for, for robots uh, it is really great uh, uh, to... Uh, see it uh, you see it jump you don't have to be big to be with it really with it uh, uh, have a good locomotion uh, another example is um, we're um, nearly the only with its animal without uh, a tail um, and uh, uh, why should a robot not have a tail? And uh, what, what he did is that they showed if you give a robot a tail, then it can uh, far more with it a better balance itself. Uh, uh, even when it, uh, it falls, it, it always with it can land on its, uh, not on its uh, legs, but on its, its wheels. Most of the robots we would it make with it are from, from metal, but at the moment that you can uh, make them from soft materials, uh, A, they are much safer to work in, in the factory as, as co-robots, but also uh, are able to squeeze to uh, small holes and, and uh, uh, um, uh, have a different shape again uh, on the other side of, of that uh, hole. And for sure, if, if you uh, 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 live with it in, in the sea, uh, that, uh, that softness uh, really is uh, a great uh, opportunity. So there's a lot of with it, uh, research going on in, in making such uh, soft robots. It's a field on its own. Another nice example of a bio-inspired uh, robot is uh, a robot uh, that's uh, inspired by the water strider. So that's a robot that can walk over water. Uh, it's uh, by uh, having enough uh, uh, such a large feet that with it they can uh, uh, drift over water. You can actually walk over water. Uh, also, Harvard has, has uh, with it, uh, made uh, a, a bee and uh, what, what they uh, used it for is to uh, see how uh, bees are with it, uh, communicating and uh, you can start to uh, make your own dance and with it, uh, to start to, to talk uh, to bees. So uh, a lot of uh, robots uh, that with uh, medical applications are, are the ones, say, the, the pills that you just uh, swallow and they make uh, the, uh, your uh, uh, odyssey through your, uh, 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 your bowels, through your, uh, your body, but that, that's not controlled. 
uh, it's nicer with it if you uh, could uh, put it in uh, one of your uh, blood, uh, blood vessels and with it uh, find its way uh, through it. But to do that, that means uh, really it has to find its way. And uh, it's often quite hard to uh, find your way through the human body, even if you uh, stay in uh, the uh, major uh, aortas. But uh, this uh, snake robot uh, makes uh, a complete uh, localization and mapping at the same time while uh, traversing uh, with it uh, through uh, the human body. Another nice example of a bio-inspired robot is the uh, one with it uh, that uh, 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 is inspired by the, the emo uh, that are, let's say, the fast uh, walking uh, birds. And you have a lot of those uh, two-legged uh, robots with uh, a small body uh, above it. And uh, they can uh, really with it walk uh, quite fast. So other examples of uh, social with it, uh, robots is in Netherlands we have the intelligent uh, pillow uh, develops. In uh, MIT you have uh, the huggable uh, robot. It's a teddy bear, uh, a teddy bear uh, but uh, when you, you start hugging it, it responses, and that's great uh, because for sure with uh, children with uh, severe autism, they don't dare to speak uh, to uh, other humans, but to a teddy bear they uh, uh, can uh, tell all their uh, secrets. Another example of nature is uh, the robot uh, jellyfish. That's uh, one example of uh, such a uh, uh, soft uh, 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 robot that uh, can with it, uh, really with it, uh, uh, change its uh, shape. Uh, and uh, that's a great robot for with it, under wa uh, water uh, surveillance because it can uh, uh, drift there for a long uh, time. Actually, what, uh, the water robots are uh, the robots that uh, really uh, have the longest uh, time scan. We also have uh, torpedoes uh, with, uh, that uh, can uh, uh, drift in uh, the different uh, water streams and they can stay on the water for more than one year, with it, a year and then surface and uh, bring up their, uh, uh, their values uh, to, to the base station. Another thing that uh, is working on uh, quite uh, uh, hard is to make uh, nanorobots. Uh, one of the uh, uh, great with it, uh, building with material is uh, DNA and they use that to uh, make a sort of uh, origami and uh, build with it small uh, uh, robots that with it, uh, can, can move uh, over surfaces. So that's really nano. Um, also, a lot of uh, uh, micro robots uh, are, are made, and the nice thing of such a, a micro uh, robots that uh, you often uh, make um, them uh, not only uh, small but also connectable. And uh, when you uh, connect those robots, you can uh, build together the, the type of uh, spider-like robot you see on, on the lower uh, right because uh, to, uh, if you uh, combine all those micro-robots uh, to one a larger body, you can have uh, far more uh, advanced uh, robots. For sure, if not every with it, uh, module has uh, the same capacities. And last but not uh, least is there are a lot of robots that are built to uh, a uh, human uh, shape. We've seen uh, the now with it uh, robots but there is also the uh, Robokind robots. And uh, the, the freaky thing of that is that they, they have a metal robot, but you can give them different hats, so from Einstein or a small uh, child. And uh, that uh, uh, makes them a bit with it uh, approachable, but at the same time a, a bit uh, freaky. And then uh, what I what it, uh, uh, promised, the, the oct arm uh, that's uh, not uh, uh, inspired by uh, an elephant but by an octopus and that are deformable arms that uh, can uh, grasp uh, nearly with it, uh, everything. 
and we know from uh, octopus that they are really uh, great if you give them uh, uh, puzzles that they can squeeze in uh, and manipulate uh, uh, quite uh, unbelievable small uh, puzzle uh, pieces uh, and uh, to get it uh, out of it. Okay, so that's uh, the first part of uh, this uh, story with all the, the bio-inspired, freaky sort of fringe robotics that you can uh, think of. And uh, I'm sure if you uh, surf the net, you can uh, find uh, some uh, even more freaky examples uh, to, uh, to think of. But let's now continue in, in other directions and think about what sort of robots we uh, not see now, but, but in, in the future.